Right, it's time for the big one. Top five in five. It's the best drivers of 2019, according to the average golfer. Yes, it tends to be the one we all get a little bit excited about, the driver. What is the best driver according to the average golf for 2019? Well, let me see. I've tried all the drivers that are on, on, the, on the top five. I'm also taking into consideration the opinions of Team Average when they've tested these drivers this year. Right, let's start. Five minutes. We're away, right, in fifth place. It's uh, It's been a consistent performer from all their, the range. It's the TaylorMade M6. And it's featured in a couple of these already in terms of, I think, their game improvement iron and their hybrid. And the driver pretty much follows suit. Decent looking club, if that's the style that you like. I've always been uh, fairly comfortable with the way the TaylorMade product looks um, from the top at a dress. I like the look of it. They toned things down a little bit. It became um, a different color top line, slightly thinner top line in terms of what sits right behind the face. Uh, but again, for me, good looking club. And it did, the majority of golfers uh, what it needed to do. So CG was placed right at the back. Plenty of help from Twist Face. Who doesn't like Twist Face? You all love it. Uh, and it performed really well. Good ball speeds, good forgiveness. I hit it all over the face and still got some decent numbers out of it. Uh, so yeah, in at number five, without being an actual game changer, really, really decent product. Number four, well, Maybe controversially, but uh, wherever you throw these in, they always come up with a bit of a uh, kickback on opinion. PXG Gen 2 driver. For me, again, this year there was a big change, a big shift from PXG. One, in terms of the price. So it brought it into a price point that was much more in line with these top drivers that are being released. And when you consider the upgrade in shafts or shaft uh, availability that wasn't an upgrade in terms of price, uh, from PXG, then it brought them much more in line with these other top brands. But for me, the performance, uh, let's, well, let's talk of the looks. Looks is very subjective. But for me, on a personal level, I love the way this muted look at the top, black and gray finish, I thought it was absolutely superb in terms of how it looked at a dress. And it performed really, really well. And for me, again, I've mentioned it on the hybrid, difference in feel than you'll get from any of these drivers. Whether or not it's a good feel or not is down to the personal opinion. But for me, again, more muted, softer sound from the driver. And again, I found that to be uh, uh, really enjoyable. Price point, still that little bit too high. Anyway, number three. Well, number three is the Epic Flash. Let's start off with the negatives. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the colouring of the Epic Flash. It was something that I just didn't like straight away. It reminded me of the Jamaican flag. And not any Jamaicans that watch the channel, please don't be offended. It's nothing to do with that. It's just, I, I don't know. I just didn't like the look of it. However, the bit that we see sat behind the ball at a dress, the crown is again, I love the way they do this sort of, uh, this. The, what's the word? Composite crown, it's got this kind of checkered flag almost finish on the top. I can't think of the word here. It doesn't matter. It looks superb. But it performed really, really well. And I think for me, uh, the Epic Flash was a combination of Rogue and Epic. It took the best bits of both and produced it in Epic Flash. And that, for me, the best bits were ball speeds across the face from Jailbreak. And I think a bit of a softer sound and better uh, forgiveness that the Rogue offered in terms of dispersion. And I think combine the two, the Epic Flash was a really, really good all-round performer. How long have we got left? We're getting close. Top two. Top two are hard to split, but we're gonna go in with Cobra had a massive year and the F9 was mega, mega popular. And I've gotta say, this is heavily swayed by Team Average's input on this one because for me, I like the F9. Would it be in my number two? Probably not, but like I said, I'm taking the opinion of Team Average into this when they test as well. And overwhelmingly, people loved and they loved the F9 driver. So for me, it performed really, really well. It was an unbelievably good price point, which again, got a massive tick from a lot of golfers out there and persuaded you to buy it, no doubt. The downer for me was, I'm not a lover of the finish uh, on the crown. It's no big deal for a lot of people, but in terms of looks, I don't like the looks in terms of the finish on the crown. And it's, it was a, it's, a, it's really off-putting. It, it's, a, it's a negative for me, but I think what you've got to consider is the positives. That's a looks and a visual thing and very much personal to me. I try to put that to one side and think about price, performance, what it does in terms of general opinion seems to be that 
And like I said, team average, they all got on this really, really well. I and mean, we tested it after testing it. I know a number of people went on to buy that driver. So it's in at number two for Cobra. Well done to them. But number one, and we are running out of time. It is again, it's the Mizuno ST190. And I think that this is, this is in at number one for these reasons. Price, looks, performance. That's, I don't know whether there are any other criteria that you need to meet, but it ticks every box. Performance, it did exceptionally well. And I mean exceptionally well in my hands from a personal perspective. Five minutes is up, I've gone on too long. In terms of my own personal performance, it was fantastic. In terms of Team Average's performance, it was fantastic. They all had great feedback. And again, people went out and bought this driver having tested it in our little uh, test facility at Four Golf. And the price point again, really, really well priced and pitched in terms of price. And why did it get to number one as opposed to the F9? Well, because the personal preference kicked in of the average golfer. And I've got off some input since it's my list. I think it's a far better looking driver than that of the F9. And that's why they probably did the same in terms of performance, price, and all the rest of it. But in terms of looks, I personally give the ST190 the number one spot for 2019. And that's it, I'm done. That's my top five. Important there is subjective all about personal little nuances that I particularly like. All important bit is you get custom fit for your own preferences. And what is your favorite driver of 2019? Stick it in the comments box down below. If you've not tried one, bought one, then out of what we've looked at or what you've seen, what would be your, what would you choose to put in a bag if you had an option? Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It was top five in about six minutes. But anyway, we got there in the end. See you soon.